and welcome to Ask a Pennsylvania Dutchman. My name is Chris LaRose, and this here is Doug Maidenford, our resident Dutchman. How are you doing? Hi, doing pretty all right. How about you? I'm always good. Well, that's good to hear. All right, well, so, we... Yeah, what, what do we got today, buddy? Well, we've had a lot of people calling in and asking in, phoning them, and, you know, asking Jeeves about uh, um, PA Dutch food. So we, well, have, we did a video on PA Dutch foods already. I guess the people out there like to eat. So. Okay. This comes from Sean Richardson of York, Pennsylvania, or York P County, Pennsylvania. Okay. He says, hi, Doug. My name's Sean Richardson, and I live in York County. So that's a little redundant, but all right, here we go. I was watching your video on Dutch food and have a comment on something you said. The hot bacon dressing you didn't mention, oh, dandelion or endives in your list of possibilities. So did he give us a list of food we want? he wants us to talk about? Well, conveniently, he did. How it happens about that? to be right here. Well, let's... Let's fill these people in. What's up on the list first? All right, well, he wants us to talk about apple dumplings. All right, an apple dumpling. This is something we eat for dessert. You make a pastry dough, you take an apple, you put it in the middle, you cover it up with the dough, and then you make it in the oven. Get some dumplings. It's really delicious with, apple. with ice cream. Oi. All right, how What's about next? whoopie pies? Whoopie pies. You know, there was this big argument not too long ago about where the whoopie pie comes from. The state of Maine. You know, said that they invented it, but there's nobody up there but a bunch of maniacs. <laughs> That's an old Professor Schnitzel joke. But anyway, I don't know where whoopie pies come from if they truly are from First Maine, time. if they're from Pennsylvania, Dutch land or not, but we've kind of taken them as our own. And a whoopie pie is this chocolate cake on top and on bottom, and then in the middle you put a cream icing filling. It looks like a big cookie. Well, it looks like a big ice cream sandwich. That's what it looks like. But they're really good. You can find them all over the place, Don, in Pennsylvania Dutch land. They're good. Yeah, what's next? No, how about uh, Buba Schengel? Now, Buba Schengel, now that's something that really is Pennsylvania Dutch. Buba Schengel in dialect means boy's legs. And it's kind of a funny name. Yeah, I know. We aren't eating boy's legs. And anyway, you make like a pierogi. Those Russian Polish people, they eat those pierogies. But we have our own version called a bubashenko. You make a, a dough and then you fill it with mashed potatoes and some people put beef in there and other herbs and so and you fold it up and then you boil it like a like a ravioli or a pierogi. You don't find them very often. It's an old, old food, but they're good. If you can find them, try them. All right, What's how next? about uh, pepper cabbage? My grandmother makes the best pepper cabbage in the world. I need to put that on record. But <laughs> for those of you that don't have the opportunity to try Grandma Maidenford's uh, pepper cabbage, it's essentially coleslaw without the mayonnaise. So it's cabbage shredded up in bell pepper and carrot, and then you make a, a sweet sour vinegar uh, dressing for it. It's really good in the summertime. It's really good on hot dogs. Try it. All right, my personal favorite, cha-cha. Cha-cha is about as Pennsylvania Dutch as it comes. Cha-cha, you take vegetables and you pickle them uh, in a sweet sour brine. Uh, cauliflower, green beans, kidney beans sometimes you find in there, Kern, kernels of corn. It's a really nice cold salad, especially in the summertime at a picnic, like pepper cabbage. you got to remember in Pennsylvania Dutch culture, you're supposed to have seven sweets and seven sours on the table at a big meal. Well, you got cha-cha and pepper cabbage that's two sars right off the bat. Well, that's pretty easy. How yeah. about the dandelion? This is something that uh, most people would turn their nose up at. But dandelion, we don't eat the yellow flower. Now, that's crazy. We do make wine from that, though, which is pretty good. But the green leaves in the springtime, when spring's first starting to come, you go walk around your yard and you find dandelion leaves. You cut them off and you clean them really good. And you make a salad out of it with hot bacon dressing. Boy, it's called the spring tonic for a reason. If you eat enough of it, it'll clean you on, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I ate it one time, I ate way too much. And let me tell you something. I was on the privy for quite a while. Oh. But it's really healthy for you. <laughs> All right, well how about dried corn? Dried corn you can buy in the grocery store in a bag. Copes is a company that makes it. They take corn and they dry it. Nature makes corn. Well, nature makes corn, but John Copes makes dried corn. And we eat that a lot in my family at the holidays, uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, you take the dried corn, you cook it so it swells back up again, and then you add to that brown sugar and milk and butter and salt and pepper. It's something that is very near and dear to my heart and my arteries. <laughs> Speaking of something near and dear to my heart, what do you think about birch beer and root beer? Yeah, you know, the Pennsylvania Dutch are big beer drinkers. We like our beer, but we also like our sweet beer. So birch beer and root beer, most Americans know what root beer is, and you can get that everywhere. 
root beer floats and so forth. But in Penn State Dutch country, we make something called birch beer, which is like root beer, but we make it from birch bark. And it has a little bit more of a bite. It's really good. There's a company called Pennsylvania Dutch in a yellow bottle of birch beer. And if for those of you that uh, are of the drinking age, and even for those of you that aren't, I'm not endorsing that, but you take a little bit of Pennsylvania Dutch birch beer and you mix it with Jägermeister and we have what's called a dirty Dutchman. <laughs> I've never heard that well, one Well, you should try it sometime. That, be careful. They're dangerous. Alrighty. Let's see, how about uh, Fosnox? Fosnox is truly Pennsylvania Dutch. Every year, the day before Ash Wednesday, <clears throat> Groundhog Day, uh, Fat Tuesday, uh, we eat Fosnox, which are homemade potato donuts. Now, it's not like what you're going to get at Dunkin' Donuts. These are real donuts made from potatoes, mashed potatoes. And then there's two schools of thought. You can coat them with sugar, which a lot of people do. But what my family did and what is also done by other Pennsylvania Dutch families is you cut them in half and you put syrup on them and butter and you serve them warm. And you only make them once a year, so you really got to eat a lot of them, which is fine by me. <laughs> How about uh, the last one on the yeah. list, pork and sauerkraut. Well, pork and sauerkraut we eat at New Year's Day, and there's tradition for this. You roast a pork loin or you boil, it doesn't matter, and then you add sauerkraut to it and eat that together. But the question always is, why are you eating pork on New Year's? And this tradition dates way back, and one of the thoughts is that you don't eat chicken or turkey because when a turkey or a chicken eat, they scratch the ground backwards. But a pig, when it eats, rutches its nose forward. So thinking about you know the connection here, it's the new year, you want to rutch ahead, you don't want to go back. So that's why we traditionally eat pork and sauerkraut. You know, if you eat it on New Year's Day, then you're going to have a, a year full of good luck and, and, and good things. Alrighty. Now hey. I'm freaking hungry again after yeah. we talk about all this stuff. That's Sean Richardson. Thank you so much. We have tourists that come to Pennsylvania Dutchland and they go to a restaurant and they look at these things in the menu and they have no idea what they are. I hope our videos can help them out a little bit. Well, we also have a, uh, an invitation from Sean Richardson. He says, uh, we would love to have you do an on-location video in the summer so we can feed you and have a good time. That sounds like... We've cool. never been invited anywhere. <laughs> I know. We got through out of a couple places already, but we've never been invited. Well, well Sean, let's talk sometime. We'd love to come to York County and have a nice Pennsylvania Dutch meal and do a little dumb hater. We'll, we'll uh, bring the dirty Dutchmen. We'll bring, bring the, the dirty pies. Dutchmen so you bring the whoopie pies. How's that sound? <laughs> We're open to any other invitations too, people. I do love dinner. Yeah. So <laughs> I guess this wraps this one up. Hopefully no more food videos because I think we've talked about all the food that's out there. Alrighty. Don't know what that was. But, but yeah, uh, we got weird sounds going yeah, on. Yeah. Huh? But anyway. So this was Ask a Pennsylvania Dutchman. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and uh, eat good food. Yeah. And mock scoot. Mock scoot. If you have a question, why you have to email us at bosterpa at yahoo.com.